So today we're working on a pocket door project. Uh, I called up Max and had him come over because this is the kind of project that a lot of people are asking me for lately. And it's a project that I think for the most part, most people can do at home on their own, with some basic hand tools. So I thought we'd cover how to do the transition. Uh, the irony here is, is when we open up the wall, we found this unique header here. Now this is not always structured like this on the header. Um, in a lot of cases, something built like this, you know, it's just convenient, it's not necessary, it may be structure. I'm not going to call an engineer and find out. We're not going to go through the hassle of trying to figure it all out. So what we're going to do is, we're going to just treat this like it's a structural wall. We're going to show you how to brace the wall, do a temporary structural wall, how to put in a proper structural point load, and then you can go on and we'll do the pocket door as well. So if you run into this situation at home, which you might, especially in an upstairs bathroom, a lot of times the hallway is a structural wall, then you'll have the ability to remove it safely and put in a pocket door by yourself. So in this project, we found a few different uh, do-it-yourselfer mistakes. So we're being overly cautious with doing the, uh, the structural load here. But for instance, this switch box here, you know, it's moretted, it's tied together, it's locked well, it looks like it's been fastened well, the wires are on properly, the staples aren't buried too far, so I can pull the staples with a screwdriver. All that's wonderful, but there was beadboard finish in this bathroom, and it was all covered up. That's a no-no. There's uh, plumbing issues over here. The water line's in the wrong spot. Um, the, the way that the pedestal sink was hooked up was incorrect. There's an extra water line in the floor where the tub is, the drain is invented. A lot of things here that leave you to think that somebody did this bathroom on their own and didn't have a full scope of knowledge to do it. So I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm not taking any chances. So what we're gonna do, first of all, so we're going to put in this pocket door and try not to affect the finish on the other side. We don't want to punch a bunch of holes there and create a brand new finish, trim and paint job. So what we're going to do is we have to first get this electrical box out of our way. Like I said, these have little tabs on them, okay, and you can just pry them off. Now if your electrician who put the wiring in didn't do a good job, he'll have hammered them all the way into the wood and that's dangerous because it causes compression and heat and that could start a fire. So what we're gonna do is I'm not an electrician, I'm not gonna run any wiring. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna remove part of this plate and open up the wood and take these wires and bring them on this side of the structure. So that way when I'm done putting in my pocket door, I can call my electrician, the ceiling underneath here will be opened up and he can rerun the wire for the bathroom and are not gonna affect our door installation. So when you're gonna cut your wall out, don't just go like on TV, grab a sledgehammer, start beating the tar out of it. What we do is we take a reciprocator with a short wooden nail blade, and I'm gonna cut between these, all this wood and try to control myself so that I'm not letting the blade pop through the wall on the other side. Once that's done, I'm gonna grab the wood and pull it towards me. And what that does is it pulls all the screws that are in that wood away from the finish side and usually leaves all the drywall patch and paint perfectly in condition as it was. We just give it a good tug. There we go. That's perfect. Now we do the same thing on the other side. Double. You'll notice here that as I'm cutting, I'm not getting any binding of my blade. There's a lot of jiggle here. Usually that translates 99 times out of a 99. This is not a structural wall. But because we have a header like this, we're gonna go ahead and put it in anyway. Better safe than sorry. Um, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not gonna pretend to be one. Again, we want to try to be delicate here so that we don't disturb the wall. I'm just going to use my little helper here. There, 
nice and controlled. So now we got the studs out of the way. You'll see the nails sticking out of the plates. And then we have an extra piece of block in here. We're gonna cut all that back. Uh, we're not gonna just use our sledgehammer. This isn't like TV. Uh, here on our channel, we like to do things safely and efficiently. <sighs> Let's take a look at this here. Sometimes the best way to get a piece of wood off of a laminated with nails, put the claw in there. And don't just try to pull it like this. Use the width of the claw as your friend. Just because it's not TV doesn't mean I don't have big toys. Working smart means using the right tool for the job. This bad boy is always the right tool for the job. We call in the big guns. So I know what's gonna happen. Sooner or later, someone's gonna write a comment on the video. Well, if it wasn't structural, why didn't you just leave the header? The reality is, is that with a pocket door, your height is much higher than a typical jam for a regular door. So a regular door is 80 inch. We usually have about an 83 inch clearance to this. 83 plus lumber plus this, 96, eight foot ceiling, that's the math. But a pocket door has this track system that's about three inches taller. So the reality is, is I can't go with this. I need a skinnier header regardless. So what we did is instead of this big piece of beast, we got a two by eight. So we're gonna just double it up and use that as our our, our header over here and then we'll structurally frame this as well to transfer load just in case maybe in the winter time you know might carry a little bit extra weight and we don't need the door to start you know squeaking so this particular header's got nails both sides all over the place so if i just start beating on it to break it out we're gonna wreck the other side of the wall so what i got here is a flat bar i can put it in the top and when i pull it out i'm putting the pressure pushing down on the wood, but straight up on the plate. There's no pressure against the drywall surface on the other side of the wall. This should just kind of lift this right out for us. There we go. Nice and easy. So I'm gonna get you to do this. Uh, you just put this up in the air, put the plate flat against the nail, so, and just cuts right off. Like butter. No, don't go outside the drywall. You gotta, you gotta, oh. you know, cut just one nail at a time, bud. Right there, cut that one first. There you go. Okay. So we're just gonna use the crowbar to lift our plate off the wire, which you can see goes right through the subfloor. Now these are live wires, so we wanna get rid of the wood. The way we do that, simple. Take the claw from the hammer and you just line up. Well, it works a lot better when you cut close to where the, the wire goes through. Okay, so here's our wire. It used to come up between the middle of the, the wood. Now you can see there's a gap between the subfloor and the plate. I'm big enough for my finger. That's big enough for the wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the wire into this gap so we can install our door and then the electrician can deal with this at his own time. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna push the wires down and just make sure. See, now I know they're not stapled to the underfloor. They're not supposed to be, but experience says check to see if somebody's done something stupid. So we can push the wires down. We know they're out of the way. I'm gonna line up my bit so it makes a hole right next to my subfloor. And I'm pushing with one hand and I'm resisting with the other so I, I don't bury right into the floor. And there we go, I've checked. And now I can see my wire. That's a good thing I pushed them down because the one wire here was traveling straight underneath there. Because I had it pushed as far as down, we aren't having a problem at all. 
Okay, in front of that plate. Okay, here we go. So there we are. You can see that we're not on our wire or pinching. And then you want to grab the level, but just throw this level. Okay, that is freaky. When's the last time we had a level floor in a bathroom door? On a structural wall, nonetheless. That never happens. So pocket door comes with this skeleton. It's just like a hollow wall, aluminum frame. This one's really nice quality, actually. There's a couple different ones on the market, but this is made with plywood, so it holds screws really well. Now, this top piece here just slides into the grooves. And this is made for the size of the door that we have. There are ones on the market that you can buy that you can adjust and cut down and fit any size door. I recommend spending the extra $5, go somewhere where you can buy the right size frame for the right size door. It'll just make your life a lot simpler. Now we've got this level and square, we're gonna throw in a construction screw. And of course, burn the wood before you go. That'll just keep the plywood from splitting. Don't forget to take out these little blocks. If you don't remove them, you're gonna drive yourself nuts trying to put your door in. A lot of pocket door systems you'll find you have to install the door uh, with the wheels on the track in the hole before you level the door system off. That's incredibly difficult for any maintenance down the road, but this system is cool. What happens here is, if this is attached to the door, the wheels just, they just wheels snap in place. And the way you get it out is you pull the white claw out this way, and then you pull the, the gray claw, and it just pops off. So if you have issues with your door or your track in the future, you can open this up and just pull these little discs that are sticking at the top of the door and pull the door down, which is brilliant. Which also means you can fully install your pocket door in a tight space. Grab the wheels at the end here and just roll them up over onto the track. Now after we're all done installing, we're gonna have a jam piece here that won't be able to slide out again. But for now, that's brilliant. So we can just screw this to the top of the door, put our door in place and pop it right up into the hole. Now you could do this alone, but I have the added benefit of having this gigantuan college kit around. Okay, we're good. Oh. One sec. Oh. Try. Move your hands. Nice. So the last finishing touch is this little bracket down here. And this does two things. It has a little plastic slides on it so that the door when it's opening and closing will rub against it and doesn't make much noise. But it's also a spreader so it, it establishes the actual width that the gap for the door should have. So that you can set this anywhere you need to and then you'll have a place where the door will slide without making noise. Once you've got that on, you gotta figure out which you wanna do for finishing hardware. There's some just round circles you can put in there to slide. You can get them with locks. Uh, it depends what you're in the mood for. But uh, let's just recap. So what you gotta do is you gotta open a hole. Don't wreck the other side. Level and square. Add your framing. Put in your door. Add your finishing hardware. One last thing to mention. I usually tell people paint your door before you install it. Just my personal preference. When this is finished, there's always gonna be part of the door, once you put the trim on, that doesn't come past this hole, you can't get a brush in perfect. You're always gonna see that line, and that's usually kind of ugly. So if you like things to be really pretty, then paint the door first before you do your hardware, and then you're all good. If your door, even after you put your sliders in, you can't find the sweet spot to keep it from making noise, put a level against it. You might be surprised to find that your door is also warped. A lot of times they come from the store like this, they store them on a shelf, top and bottom support, and they're just gonna sag in the middle. The way you fix it, throw a shim in there, give her a couple of days, now it'll be done. No questions asked.